J.C. in Evanston, Illinois. Hey, J.C., what's on your mind today? Hi, Tom. Uh, I'm a little, uh, a little nervous. I'm driving. Um, I have an idea, and I don't know if you were talking about this before I was able to tune in, but I think the cities and municipalities that have these statues might be missing a great opportunity. It kind of fills in with what that German town did, which was great, um, about making money. Um, they put these statues up open for public bid to remove. Um, they can set an undisclosed minimum and have uh, sealed bids and, that are publicly opened. That way you kind of serve three purpose, purposes. You could out who is wanting to take these statues. Um, two, you'd be taking cash from them, which always hurts. And three, you'd be getting, the municipalities would be getting cash to actually uh, do some good. Um, the, the analogy, JC, that I think we always need to pop into our minds and is, is the one of Germany. And the reason why is because, and this is why the Antifa people have been so aggressive even at small, you know, small gatherings of 50 Nazis, is because, I mean, keep in mind, when Hitler took control of Germany, he only had about a 30% approval rating. He, he never won a majority. He, he you know, it's, a, it's kind of a convoluted story, but, you know, the fascists don't need, because they're willing to bully people, and most people will be bullied. There's, how many Republicans have spoken out using Donald Trump's name? To the best of my knowledge, zero. Right, Paul Ryan, John McCain, all these, Lindsey Graham, all these great noble guys who are tweeting out things like fascism is a terrible thing. None of them are saying I disavow Trump. None of them are saying Trump is wrong. They're, you know, they're just all speaking in general because they're afraid. And so, you know, if would Germany allow Nazi iconography um, in order to or sell it for that matter in order to raise money? No, because then it becomes you know, part of somebody's private collection or becomes part of a museum or whatever that celebrates Nazism. Um, somebody in my Twitter feed this morning suggested that we just grind away the person and leave the horse and, 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 and change the statue to, here once stood a statue of a disgraced traitor to the United States, Robert E. Lee or whatever it be, may be, and a little bit of history, right? Here once stood the statue. That uh, you know, maybe even a whole story about how, you know, after after Plessy versus Ferguson in 1898, a lot of these statues started appearing, and then there was another big revival of them after 1915, after Birth of a Nation, nation uh, you know, came out, and, uh, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. I'm just, you know, a little history lesson. That's a possibility, but I would say, you know, I, I agree with the guy on Twitter. Grind down the, or grind off the, the guy sitting on the horse and just leave the horse there. <laughs> JC, I, I, you know, I hate to burst your bubble because you, know, you had a, you had a great, you have a great idea. If the stakes weren't so high, if if this wasn't like, you know, uh, respectfully, if this wasn't stuff that could literally end the republic, JC, thanks for the call. And let's let's not forget, Donald Trump has the ability to extinguish all life on this planet. He has the nuclear codes. He could start a nuclear war if he feels sufficiently tortured. If he feels sufficiently trapped, you know, a rat in the corner is the most dangerous rat. And when you look at people who do basically kind of murder suicides, which it would be if, if he were to start a nuclear war with North Korea and thus with China and ultimately probably even with Russia, or if he were to start a war with Iran, which could turn into a nuclear war with Russia, if, if, if Donald Trump was to do that, and, 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 he, and he is doing the slower version of that, by the way. He's got, you know, the, the toady for the fossil fuel industry, Scott Pruitt, running the EPA, doing away with regulations that prevent the, the, the emission of poisons and, and greenhouse gases. And, uh, you know, so he's killing the planet as it is. It's not quite as quickly as a nuclear war. But the, this is serious, serious stuff. Hey, Mike, Michael, what's up? There's a couple of things. Uh, the first one is on the stock market. There's a website called www.mutpl.com. The stock market is now valued not as the crash of 2008, but as the crash of 1929. I agree. The price to earnings ratio is exactly what it was just before the 29 crash. Yep. That's highly overvalued. Yep. Okay. And you can watch this. Okay. Oh yeah, we're in a now, bubble. 
you know, in a bubble, right. The second thing is about Trump. I think we're actually fortunate. He got elected on a fascist coalition, and the military and, uh, and large sections, the corporate establishment is running from him, even like people like Lindsey Graham, which is great. My main fear is that he decides to nuke North Korea, and, but uh, he can't do that without James Mattis, who doesn't seem to be totally insane. So I'm hopeful. This is not Hitler, because he does not have the type of support that Hitler had at that time. He actually can do it without James Mattis. The, the, the way that the nuclear code launch sequence thing is organized, um, and there was some good reporting on this a week or so ago in either the Post or the Times, um, the way that that code, uh, that, that, that whole launch process is initiated is it basically goes directly from the president right to the guys who, who, you know, turn the keys and push the button and fire the missiles. And it does not go through the chairman of the Joint Chiefs. It does not go through the Pentagon. It's, it's a direct command. And the reason why is because it envisions a time, you know, of uh, Armageddon, essentially, of, you know, where the president might be the last one standing or there's nuclear missiles on their way here, and you got three minutes to get this thing done, and there's no time to call up a guy at the Pentagon and say, what do you think about this? So I'm not, I, I, I'm not reassured, frankly, by Mattis being there. And I do think that uh, Donald Trump, if he's looking at going to prison, uh, and along with his kids, uh, you know, for this Trump Soho deal or whatever it may be, uh, you know, unless he can get Mike Pence to commit to him that he's going to pardon Trump and all his kids. Um, I, I don't think it's too bizarre to think that he might try to take down the whole world with him. And that scares the, the bejesus out of me. That concerns me tremendously.